บันความก้าวหน้าทางด้านเทคโนโลยีเกิดขึ้นและเปลี่ยนแปลงอย่างรวดเร็วสถาบันการศึกษาชั้นนำทั้งในและต่างประเทศจึงจำเป็นต้องปฏิรูปการเรียนรู้ด้วยการปรับกระบวนการเรียนการสอนให้เป็นรูปแบบ Active Learning โดยใช้แนวคิดการสอนให้น้อยลงเรียนรู้ให้มากขึ้นด้วยการนำศักยภาพของเทคโนโลยีสารสนเทศมาใช้เป็นตัวกระตุ้นในการจัดการเรียนการสอนในฐานะที่เป็นเทคโนโลยี d r i v e n Learning การจัดการเรียนการสอนในรูปแบบดังกล่าวจะไม่ได้ลดเนื้อหาความรู้ให้น้อยลงแต่ผู้สอนจะต้องทำการวิเคราะห์เนื้อหาและปรับวิธีการสอนให้มีความเหมาะสมยิ่งขึ้นซึ่งการปฏิรูปการเรียนรู้ดังกล่าวนับเป็นการพัฒนาการเรียนการสอนเข้าสู่ระบบ Education 3.0 วันนี้รายการ Education Today จะพาไปร่วมพูดคุยกับแขกรับเชิญที่จะมาให้ความรู้เกี่ยวกับบทบาทของศูนย์นวัตกรรมการเรียนรู้จุฬาลงกรณ์มหาวิทยาลัยซึ่งจะมีส่วนสนับสนุนด้านการศึกษาให้แก่มหาวิทยาลัยและนักศึกษาอย่างไรนั้นไปติดตามชมกันค่ะ For education today, we're joined by two special guests to give us a lot of information about the most innovative, cutting-edge ways of learning applied to universities like Tulalongkorn University in Thailand today. So, joining us today to tell us more about that is a pioneer behind this interactive learning space, Dr. Patarachat Komon Kitti, the director of the Learning Innovation Center of Tulalongkorn University, and also Kun Sanya Setha Pitiakun, who's the president of Trinitech, and he. He's also the designer and developer of this active learning space. สวัสดีค่ะ Thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. For the first question, though, asking about the trends in education, a lot of the trends in various schools follow technological developments, and so classrooms and also the curriculum are also developed accordingly. So, how would you say? Describe that kind of simultaneous evolution of the classroom development and technological development. Right. Um, actually, j u l a n g o n University sees the opportunity in improving through the technological innovations by um, driven through our center, the Learning Innovation Center. Okay. We actually approach this through multiple facets of technology, either the on-campus transformation or the online presence of our university. Um, the place that we are around here today are called Active Learning Space, which is one of the strategy that we are driven through. We relying on some new technology in allowing students to share their content, to share their discussions, and facilitating all the learnings that could occur in many new forms. Mm -hmm. And therefore, of course, we see both things as the trend based on our new generations of the learners. As well as their regular competency in the new digital world, so therefore, this is the place that we see the opportunity to do so. I see. In terms of uh, technological developments and application to the classroom, what do you think is a trend in innovative learning in terms of technological developments at uh, in our period in time? Right. Uh, uh, nowadays, I think uh, we we are focused to uh, build up skill for for students. Uh, especially the skill for 21st century, and in in order to come up with those skill, we have to change the way we teach. And if we want to change the way we teach, we will uh, we have to change the environment as well, because the environment will impact have an impact on the behavior, the learning behavior. So uh, this this room try to bring in all the technology that uh, encourage students and teacher to discuss to share. Right, the, the interaction. Knowledge. Right, right, right. I see. Yes. In terms of the purpose, the main purpose of these interactive classrooms is to promote learning through interaction. Right. And can you describe any other functions and purposes of the center? All right. Um, for the active learning space, we basically encourage the new way of learning, which is we refer to as active learning. Okay. Previously, what we are used to, especially in Thai society, are so-called so, so passive learning. Mm. Okay, that you basically just sit and listens to the lecturer going on with with their content. 
However, in the new world, we cannot survive by just having the student absorbing whatever the content giver are given to, to them. So therefore, we have to ask them to be able to innovate. Right? So if the goal is said to be that they have to survive in the new world to be innovator, so we have to ask them to practice that innovation aspect of their thinking. So we have to push the new way into active learning. So the active learning to facilitate that, we need to have the proper space in order to allow them to have their, their own mind going around without relying or just believing in the teaching of the, the lecturer. Mm -hmm. So the, the space are around here, we support the new way of, of learning, which would make the graduates become the innovator, as well as other aspects that we also support the teacher, that they have to change the way they teach instead of being just the content giver, now they have mm. to be facilitator of how the learning aspect is going to be. So therefore, we also support the teacher to various forms of support, either by using some grants that we have. We support them by you know, having trainings, proper trainings for them in order to use new technology, new tools, and as well as providing other ways of content because Without content, the students are still you know, going around without knowing what are right or wrong. So therefore, there must be another way of, of providing content which could normally could be going through online. I see. Mm -hmm. You talked about the importance of how an interactive learning space mm -hmm. is for our current society mm -hmm. and our current technological era. What has been the detriment of kind of passive learning, as you talked about, applied to our current, you know, societal development, socio-developments. As I mentioned before, um, once you are based on the passive learning, you become passive by nature. Mm. So you cannot be the innovator because to be innovator, you have to be active. You have to be asking questions. You have to be you know, going through problems and trying to solve problems. And the problem must be figured out on your own. If you cannot ask questions properly, then you cannot be a proper innovator. Once you be just passive learner, then you only be trying to answer whatever questions are given to you from the teacher. And that is sort of the restricted way. It might be proper in the regular industry world, if you're going back to industry world, then ability to answer proper questions is fine. But now we are in so-called Thai, Thailand 4.0. So therefore, we are asking new generation to be innovator. So to train innovator, they have to be able to do based on the active learning that we are trying to support here. Very good indeed. Let, let, let me add uh, some more detail. Uh, in, in order to, to be innovator, uh, you have to build up at least three skills in, in basic level. The first one is critical thinking. But uh, just, just only you have the critical thinking, you cannot have uh, the, the innovations, but uh, you need communication and collaboration. So this room is kind of uh, designed to, to support that thing. We, we need uh, students to discuss what they've learned, to share and to collaborate, to come up with uh, their friends, with new ideas. Right, indeed. In the past, many of us would think that scientists or mathematicians right. or physicists are not communicators. But right. with this particular technology mm. and new layout, perhaps it can promote that kind of communication mm. to allow physicists or biologists or scientists to also be communicators as well. Right. Meanwhile, you have three different types of classroom formats or layouts. There's a smart classroom, interactive classroom, and also the multi-monitor classroom as well. It three types of functions. Could you explain how they work and what they are? Mm, uh, for, for this classroom, you have uh, many screens, multi-monitor, as you mentioned. Uh, we, we, uh, the way we teach, we will provide the student with, with problem. Uh, they can do the, the critical reading or critical search outside the room. Uh, once they get into the room, they can show and share uh, what they learn with the, on the screen, and if the teacher see that this, this group is very good and want to show to another group, uh, the teacher can switch or broadcast uh, the, the evidence, uh, the result from this group to other groups. Mm, That's the monitor, so a multi-monitor room. 
right. I see. All right. And as well, for other kinds of classroom, it also depends on what kind of equipment that we provide throughout the classroom. In this room, we can refer to as multi-monitor room. In some other room, we also install with additional equipment with a smart board. So right. therefore, it could be more interactive in the way of teaching that um, the student could come up to the, the screen and then write something up and then could be distributed further. So we refer to that as an interactive features of the room. So there could be some rooms that could have multiple features included in a single room. Mm -hmm. Could one room be both an interactive classroom with multi-monitors and be a smart classroom three-in-one? Correct. Correct. I can see. Be, can be. Okay, so it depends on pretty much just a mixture of the different technologies, whether it's a monitor, um, the interactive board you mentioned, or whether it's a smart classroom. What distinguishes the three, though, for the three different types? For the smart classroom, if you allow the layout to be, to be more flexible and allow them to be arranged in such a way that encourage the discussion to encourage the collaborations among the team as well as providing enough equipment. For instance, if you look around here, you will see spaces that could be written. Okay? So you might see them as class, but actually they are the space that you could write down to, to encourage uh, discussions. So if you have this kind of facility, facility then we will refer to them as a smart classroom. Now we can have additional equipments added to that to facilitate them further. For instance, you can have uh, more screens, you can have more uh, interactive board, you can have other equipments added in, then, then you can add more features. But of course it depends on the need and typical usage of, of each classes as well. Right, so the, the props and the necessities, the basics are provided, but it's up to the professors and teachers. The, the outcome they, of the class, and actually. the outcome of the class, yeah. how they would cater right. the course to the students and Correct. such. Right. In terms of the size, real quick, is size limited in, in terms of the smart classroom, the interactive learning space? Is there an unlimited number of students who can join? Or is it best to limit this classroom, say, to less than 50, for example? Mm -hmm. Does size matter? The size actually have many aspects to it. Okay. For instance, there could be, depending on the available space, available space from each school that they have, but we would like to limit into around 50 because bigger than that, we start having problem you know, communicating among others, other groups because there could be too many groups in one room and it may require too many facilitators in a room. Okay? But too small, then it means that you only restrict yourself into a small meeting room which would, would not encourage much of the learning that we ex expected to see. Okay? So typical usage that we see would be that a student would cram in around 40 to 50 per group Bigger than that, we start seeing problems. Smaller than that, we also see problems. I see. So just the right size. Correct. Right. For the teaching, those were students and interactive learning. Regarding teaching though, how do teachers have to tweak and modify their curriculum and courses to cater and you could say to accommodate such spaces? Let, let me say by the other way around that we actually need the teaching to change. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we need to change the way the teacher conduct their class from the regular passive to active learning. So we provide a space to help the teacher changing their way. But of course, they, the teacher have to realize by themselves first that the way the teaching has to be changed. Okay? We, we are coming to the so-called outcome-based learning right now. Okay? This is the new era of outcome-based learning. So to achieve certain outcomes, it may not be achievable by just a regular listen and, and, and answers. Okay? Right. They have to exercise their brain, so to speak. Okay? So therefore, we help the teacher as well, either, as I mentioned before, either by through the training, through the grant, through observations, through uh, many, many forms of support by Jula themselves or by the, the school that sees the point that we have to change. And all those could be measurable through the result from our graduates that we, they have more 
ability, they have more competencies in you know answering the new world's questions. Mm. Yes. And indeed, like the format that the teachers have to apply to such classrooms and such environments are things you mentioned earlier, such as roaming and allowing students to actually engage on their own as well. Correct. Is that right? Correct. I see. Meanwhile, with the classrooms being located indoors, whether it's the smart classroom, interactive classroom, multi-monitor classroom, can any of this be applied outdoors to promote interactive space, interactive learning outdoors? Okay. So um, for, for the term that we intended to use is called active learning space. So it's actually not limited to just a room. Mm -hmm. okay? So active learning could occur in any way. It depends on the context of the subject that we would like to tackle. Right? Right. For instance, um, I have seen some subject that they would like to ask students to observe the quality of wireless communications. So I in that era, the student has to go around, actually around our campus, to go through outdoor, to go through you know, many hallways of the buildings to try to see how the quality of the wireless service changed over the space. So those kind of learning could occur throughout our campus, not limited to just a room. So the, the key part is actually depend on the context of the active learning. How do you make that active learning occur? It's not restricted to the space. It's the space that we have here, it's just uh, one of the possibility to allow the the active learning to occur, but it's not limited to just within this room. It can occur anywhere, either indoor or outdoor. I see. So, and it can be applied and you can say modified and adapted according to various classes, exactly. definitely in subject. Speaking of which, currently you have about 20 of these particular smart classrooms Correct. at Jolalongkorn University. Do you plan in the future to expand that to accommodate more? And what, what's in the pipelines for the future? The pipeline is that once we see that this would be considered as the sort of the pioneer of the learning space that we have, okay, we intend to keep adjusting. Okay, we are not satisfied with what we have right now. We actually also start seeing problem in terms of the real users and we adapt on the fly too. In terms of the new space, new spec for the equipments, we change the equipment from place to place as well as we try to cater to different needs from different faculty as well because the space that we see around here, it may be suitable for the subject in science or in social science, but once we go into the realm of arts, they may not actually happy with this kind of space because they want more creativity, they want more space to roam around, to right. go around. The, the way of their uh, subject are not in terms of the discussion, but rather in terms of expressions. How do, they, how do we allow the expressions to occur? So those would be the new type of the learning space that we are also you know, trying to tackle as well. Right, with learning and activity and interaction, there's also always changes and modifications in technology to adopt and also to modify the classrooms as you go. Meanwhile, getting a bit technical, can you describe the strategy that's called uh, LIL, L-I-L-L-E, -L -L -E, right. and how that's applied to this uh, interactive learning space? Right. Um, for that, is we trying to pronounce as Lily. Okay? Lily. Lily, okay. It will stand for Learning in Innovation for Lifelong Education. Okay. So therefore, um, that is our model. And we uh, then, once we shorten them as lily, then we create a symbol that actually resembles the flower, lily. And then we trying to use that as a you know, key message throughout the university that we have to transform ourselves through those aspects. We actually have six petals of the lilies, okay? So the three petals are trying to tackle three aspects inside the university, we refer to that as a campus transformations, including the active learning, which is more of the philosophy of the learning, the learning space, this is one of the things that we're trying to do here, as well as the Lily community, which is to train the facilitator, new facilitator, train the lecturer to become more of the new type of the teacher. The other three aspects that we are trying to do is the online presence of the university, including the online lecture, online library, as well as online course, which are now commonly known as Jula MOOC. Mm -hmm. 
Sounds very cutting edge indeed. Mm -hmm. Last question, what is the Jula clicker, for example, in the course fill of the learning, the learning space? And how is that being applied to encourage this particular new kind of learning, this innovative learning? All right, so let me ask, answer the first part of the clicker for the course fill part. We may, I may ask Kun Sanya to help, okay? For the clicker part, since we are in a bigger space that is uh, more spread around, the way to allow the interaction as well as to collect data from students in you know, certain aspect because we want to get some interaction to encourage active learning. This is not just one way. Problem based is one one of the way of the active learning only, right? Discussion based is the other way. There could be many other way to encourage active thinking from the student. So clicker is just an equipment that <coughs> help the teacher as well as a system to collect the result from the student. It's not necessarily just could be a hardware. The first version was a hardware based. Right. That we have the sort of like regular remote control that we distributed and could collect result from a student based on their input. Okay. We turn into software based as well. Um, later on we have to lock clicker and lately we also rely on some other platform that could collect data directly either through course view, that would be answered later on, as well as some other new technology. But basically that is the tool that we use to utilize for active learning in either this space or different kind of space that we want some feedback from the students. I see. Yes. Okay, for, for course view, uh, as you asked before about the, the space for the learning, it's not limited in, in just only in, uh, in how, uh, uh, what was it just, just in the classroom, but right. outside as well. So the, the LMS or, or Cosview is learning management system or, or LMS platform. Uh, main, the main purpose of the LMS is to focus or to help students and teachers connect together uh, outside the room. So that's the Cosview. I see. Uh, Cosview is the, the platform that is uh, designed and developed by uh, a professor here. Uh, Chulalongkorn University uh, Faculty of Engineering. Uh, instead of uh, bringing in uh, international or outside uh, platform, we try to develop our own platform. Uh, not only the, the connectivity that we want to provide, but we also like to have data. Uh, since this, this is the, the edge or the big data e e era, right. so we want to do the data analytics we can bring uh, the behavior, the learning behavior of the student and the learning outcome uh, to improve our class better by using the course Ah, so very good indeed. With all this technology combined and developed and, and still kind of changing and evolving with the times, definitely something that's effective for today's new thinkers, new age thinkers and innovators. So you need innovation to teach innovators in the future. Thank you very much for all of your insights today. ทุกวันเสาร์เวลา10นาฬิกาถึง10นาฬิกา30นาทีทางสถานีโทรทัศน์นิวส์วันและนี่คืออีกหนึ่งรายการคุณภาพจาก RSU Wisdom TV ทีวีแห่งมหาวิทยาลัยรังสิต